Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel Physics Sergi and here we are with the 100th video of our channel and uh, I'm very happy today. So the thing is, uh, I should thank uh, my family, my friends and my students, um, my colleagues who have supported me all through and encouraged me to actually go ahead with this kind of an effort and uh, with all their positive and constructive criticism uh, that I have, I have actually grown uh, as a as a problem presenter in this particular uh, channel okay so and not to forget all my subscribers uh, lovely uh, support that they have given me till now whatever they could do actually to promote the channel they have done I am very happy right and in case you are new and you have not yet done it it's very important for me to actually ensure that you keep uh, promoting this channel and uh, keep sharing Sharing this uh, videos right so hundredth video I think if you have been a regular visitor to my channel you understand each of these hundred videos there is a lot of effort and uniqueness to each video the way it is presented how it teaches the topic of JE physics especially along with the Olympiads uh, nuggets that you uh, keep getting through the problem solving techniques I present okay so all these things uh, if you are very satisfied with uh, please make sure you do share the content when I say share I think uh, you need to help me out in promoting uh, this particular channel okay and why is it very important I'll try to um, um, elaborate more at the end of the video so please do stay um, uh, for some announcement that I'm going to make at the end of the video okay so with all the emotion and the promotion out of our way let's go ahead with the topic uh, that I'm uh, chosen this is also a very special topic very close to my heart the I like presenting this because this is slightly challenging on a video platform so let's try our best to understand and explore and resolve the rotating frames of reference and the usually bugged uh, issue of Coriolis force centrifugal force and Euler force and how to actually visualize these things and how to draw them and how to solve problems so what I am going to do is slightly longer video so we are going to first of all take up the concept derivation very quickly and try to put this derivation in simple four illustrations covering these particular concepts so that's the agenda of this particular video okay so let's go ahead and see there's a certain concept lot of things as usual on the board so please do follow my lead don't get scared it's very very simple once you start understanding things okay and it would also help if you have seen one video so I, I i'll talk about that as we move along okay right so stay with me in a rotating frame say b relative velocity of a let's say you're observing a and you are the frame b which is rotating then you are trying to calculate vab bar which is read as velocity of a with respect to b it is given by now this is very important vab bracket r throughout my video would be considering the relative velocity measured with respect to rotating frame how do i read this velocity of a with respect to b which is rotating frame so uh, which is equal to velocity of a with respect to b had it been a translating frame so the way that you generally calculate is va bar minus vb bar but there would be an extra term that will come because of the rotating effect so a, a, a simple illustration of that is if the b is a human eye like this if you see on the right side of the picture and it is rotating about itself with an omega and then a point distant from it will move in an opposite direction so right now i ask you to do a simple experiment stay where you are turn your head towards left without moving right so only rotation should be there no translation so when you turn your head the computer screen or the mobile screen in front of you or maybe a tv screen in front of you starts moving in opposite direction and you see that the farther objects move faster that means this velocity that you are looking at for a farther point is like an r omega term where omega is the angular rotation of your head r is the distance from a this has been very well illustrated in a visually explained problem resolved video uh, in the past it's an old video uh, I think one and a half month back I have done this so old uh, subscribers will be knowing about that so in case you are new for this particular part itself I can't include the entire explanation again for the length of the video please do go to the uh, link in the description and watch that video about basic idea of a pseudo force and how this uh, rotating term will affect your cancellation of relative velocity so it it will be very worthwhile so please pause the video here go there try to finish that particular part and go ahead so I'm assuming that you have watched that video in going ahead with this explanation okay so basic explanation contains this right now 
so vab had it been in a translating frame we all are taught by our school level uh, textbooks that it is va minus vb so in rotating frame apart from what you do there is an extra term which i explained using that rotating of head kind of an effect okay right so at that particular place i'll write a side note which i'll use keep on using from now onwards when i don't put any t it means the translating thing only right so i don't want too many subscripts uh, going into the problem okay if at all it is rotating then i'll put an r so what i did is you if you carefully observe i put the blue on this side and took the green one on the other side okay right and i am saying this is nothing but d r a b bar by d t okay so the rate of change of position vector is the subtraction of this velocity and that should be if written in the rotating frame now i am writing the rate of translating term in rotating term so okay so v a b bar right v a b bar that should be there with r that is rotating uh, relative velocity plus this term okay so this is something like a thumb rule i will remember so next time onwards how do you uh, think of this any uh, uh, rate of a rotating vector will contain the rotating term plus you have to add an omega cross rab term this is the extra part that you will end up coming okay right so keep that in mind now the second important part that uh, whatever i said i wrote it here so when we differentiate a rotating vector say rab bar above we get two terms first one which is the usual term we get if we were translating and second term comes out to be the term of the cross product with respect to the omega of the observer that is the term that i am talking about omega cross rab and this should be applicable not just for the position vector it should be applicable for any rotating vector okay right so whatever i wrote on the side at the top here just carefully observe i borrowed it for your convenience here okay right so d by dt of rab it can be written as vab in rotating frame bar plus omega bar cross rab bar okay so the, this 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 is a very important term now borrowing this to the next page now again lot of stuff so if you stay with me it will all be fun okay right so i just borrowed whatever i wrote in the previous uh, page at the end here and i am going to do differentiation with respect to time the whole agenda is to get to acceleration because that would be related to the forces okay right so i differentiated on the left hand side and right hand side i realize this is a rotating term and this contains some rotating terms okay right so differentiating these terms first of all this bracket itself gives you two terms okay this itself gives you two terms as i told you in the previous page whereas this this particular thing will produce a chain rule right so you will have a differentiation of this cross with this and this one cross the differentiation so and in the second part drab by dt itself is this number okay so it will be a huge elaboration or expansion of terms okay so the second part this one is a chain rule with the second term involving d by dt of rab i wrote it in blue because it's nothing but the again the entire thing written down okay right so let's go step by step first one this one that is this which is here differentiating this one i'll get that then you have this extra term that i talked about right omega cross this number that i have to write okay so what is the value of vab r here please remind yourself this is a vector which is nothing but a velocity of a with respect to b in rotating frame that's what we keep telling us so it's a relative velocity as measured by rotating frame then plus we are into this one first differentiation of this is very simple it is alpha bar okay right so omega bar will become alpha bar cross rab bar okay so that as it is the second term is omega bar cross this vector okay right so this vector this i am going to again transform for that i will just substitute d by dt of rab bar which is nothing but this one is this entire thing so this entire thing will come here giving you more number of terms okay so not very difficult if you are following very carefully to what i am saying okay next step what i am going to do is um, i am going to multiply ma on both sides can you see mass i think the agenda is to get to the forces so you need multiplication with mass of the object you are observing who is the observer here b and whom you are observing a a is the object you are observing so i have multiplied ma everywhere not a very difficult step and another important thing this term is here let's let's borrow okay now the thing is this one has suddenly become two it's not magic what i did here is the d by dt of rab was two terms right what were those two terms on the top 
this these terms so i bring this one here and i have omega cross this one plus omega cross this one okay right this omega cross this one will add to this yellow term and make it twice can you understand why i get a two uh, here right so right so the second term is omega cross of omega cross of r a b it's a very simple expression that you end up having okay so keep going with the patience now this part and this part and this part play an important role in our discussion now let's understand what these are this is mass of object a multiplied by acceleration as seen by uh, b with respect oh, sorry as um, as seen by uh, b of a okay so related to acceleration whereas this is the rotating frame acceleration so what i'll do is i'll bring this one on left hand side and this one on to the other side okay so which means if this number is written then this minus of all these terms i should write on the other side i'll tell you the reason why i wrote what is this number mass into acceleration as seen by rotating frame would be the force that this rotating frame guy observes if he, he thinks let's say he's trying to apply f equal to ma which is not allowed to but imagine he is applying it he would say mass multiplied by the acceleration that i see okay so that's what i'm trying to calculate whereas this particular term because it's in the translating term it is nothing but a a minus ab so i have split this one into subtraction already i'll tell you why i did that and then all these terms on the other side will make it a minus sign so this i think everyone should be able to make out i there was a uh, lhs becoming rhs and rhs becoming rhs so please make sure that you understand this now from here i'll make something nice what is maaa mass into acceleration that should be the total real force that is actually acting on the object a okay so i wrote that as f real so f observed is equal to f real plus lot of terms all these terms are summed up and called as fictitious or pseudo force now the pseudo force therefore contains four terms very clearly if you understand there contains four terms okay so the first term is minus remember i should put a plus and whatever is inside is called a pseudo force so minus is included in the formula of pseudo force minus ma into ab i think this is very familiar to us this blue term is what we do in translation chapter when any observer is accelerating with an acceleration ab and he watches ma you put a minus ma into ab and that is a pseudo force component due to linear acceleration of the observer b okay so he will this term is very familiar the all yellow terms are due to rotation effects okay right so this minus 2m into omega cross v relative when i say v relative in which frame is this relative velocity we are talking about rotating frame okay minus 2m into omega cross v relative from onwards is a component of pseudo force called as coriolis force named after the person who actually proposed it and minus ma into alpha cross r it is due to angular acceleration is called euler force that euler force is also a component of pseudo force okay right and minus m into omega cross omega cross r a b is called centrifugal force now this one when you take omega is already perpendicular to all in a planar circular motion this becomes our famous formula of minus m r omega square this is a term which should be directed away from the a uh, point of observation okay so the three components along with the linear term together is called total pseudo force okay so this is something that should be very very clear in your mind okay right so now let's try to apply this from easier illustration to the tougher illustrations okay so illustration one let me explain first we'll go from the right hand side it's a very simple uh, question wherein you see a girl who is sitting on a turn table which is already rotating and there is a box also fixed okay right uh, both the girl and box are at rest with respect to this table right so they are not running on the table they are just sitting where they are only table is making them move okay even though in this diagram it looks like their radius is same i have taken a general case here to represent girl is at let's say a radius of r1 and the box is at a radius of r2 and even the angle also i have made it some arbitrary one to show you what the girl observes okay right now the acceleration of the girl 
okay the acceleration of the girl would be always directed towards the center now in this particular problem i am taking uniform circular motion so there is no alpha so illustration one simple uniform circular motion so there won't be any alpha so since there is no alpha the euler term won't be there okay so let's see what other terms will exist okay now ask any ground observer about the girl girl is moving in a circular motion uniform circular motion of radius r1 at that instant the real acceleration of the girl is directed towards the center called a girl and that vector is always in the negative direction of r1 so i think you all will agree that the real acceleration of the girl is minus omega square r1 bar okay similarly you ask the ground observer the box is also going in its own uniform circular motion of radius r2 and the a box bar would be on similar lines minus omega square r2 bar these are centripetal accelerations real accelerations now when you ask yourself what is the relative velocity of the box with respect to girl right relative velocity of the box with respect to girl that would be zero right the the box would not be seen to be moving with respect to the girl okay so that you should be again as i told you watch that video that i have already spoken of right in the previous uh, pages that in that video i proved that if two objects are rigidly attached to a single circular rotating frame then velocity with respect to one another would be zero right you will always see the box is in front of you it is not moving okay so since v relative is zero there won't be any coriolis force remember in the coriolis is force uh, acceleration uh, whatever pseudo force that you found there was a v relative term so v relative here is zero so only pseudo force component that could be there is either due to the linear term remember there are two terms one is the minus ma term and then another one is a centrifugal keep remembering that there are four possibilities linear term centrifugal term coriolis term and euler term in this problem v relative is zero therefore no coriolis there is alpha zero there is no um, uh, euler term only possibilities are the uh, uh, linear term in pseudo component and the centrifugal component okay now we have to prove that really the girl is actually not going to see any acceleration v relative is zero but i have to prove a relative is also equal to zero so what's the formula for the centrifugal uh, component of that acceleration uh, if i remove that m i have removed the m here i can multiply it later it would be nothing but uh, directed from the girl away from the uh, girl in the direction of the box so what is this vector if this is r1 bar this is r2 bar this is r2 minus r1 bar so in this direction the centrifugal component would be omega square into r2 bar minus r1 bar so f total on box as seen by the girl is therefore now girl is the observer watching the box f real plus f pseudo as i said usually pseudo will contain two components now you have uh, sorry four components now you have only two of them one is the linear term minus m a girl right minus m a girl what is minus m a girl plus m omega square r1 bar right because a girl itself is a minus term right and what is the centrifugal term this this number that m omega square into r2 minus r1 so linear and centrifugal i just add up and m a box what is a box you wrote here just keep substituting all the terms minus ma girl from the top you substitute and then this one you could see all of them nicely arbitrarily remember i didn't take any special triangle or a collinear any triangle any position you will end up having sum of all forces equal to zero from the previous video relative velocity is zero from this video the force is zero so the body continues to remain at rest as seen by the girl okay hence the box seems to be at rest continuously to her okay right so that is what illustration one in which uh, we chose a case where there is no coriolis there is no euler okay right but you should not think only centrifugal is there there is a linear term also if you don't take that then you won't get this zero okay right now let's move on to illustration two in which i'll slowly introduce the coriolis also i'll keep the euler out and i'll uh, get the euler in the last illustration okay so again a lot of things so let's try to watch on the left side first imagine this is a top view of a turntable and a person is sitting and as he's in this position at this place a ball actually leaves this table with the same velocity as the velocity of this person that means it was almost at the rim having the same velocity as the person and it just went off 
onto the table okay right so all this is on the horizontal smooth surface so assume this is going to go in a straight line as seen by us who are stationary the ball actually goes in a straight line okay now just imagine this person is actually seeing this okay now this person has two uh, uh, two things that are, that are happening he is having a linear velocity also and he is seeing the ball actually separating out from him okay so separating out from him so there is a relative velocity that he watches so in um, approximately the relative velocity is directed away from him okay and there is an omega for him with with his eyes right and this is a nice recipe for coriolis force in this problem what is the uh, cross product of the v relative and omega so remember it is minus 2m into omega cross v relative minus 2m into omega cross relative so if you bring minus inside the coriolis force is always in the direction of v relative cross omega just pause the video here try to use right hand thumb rule for v relative cross an outward vector omega i think you'll end up getting this so as seen by this guy he feels on the ball there is an extra force in this direction that's why instead of actually in front of his eye line the ball seems to fall behind because of this coriolis force okay 2m multiplied by that and that's what this explanation is doing here so ball is released here and ball would be perceived by the time you could see human eye he is here and later human eye is here he he, he would say two things the separation out in this direction is due to centrifugal force and this backward component where the ball seems to fall behind the line of sight is attributed to the coriolis force of that whatever v cross omega that i am talking about okay so this is a nice illustration in which you have introduced the coriolis force also so let's move forward to the third illustration very standard and a practical illustration of coriolis force which also includes why the cyclones move the way that we actually see okay so very simple the upper two diagrams are assumed for non rotating earth if earth were not to rotate and the lower two diagrams are for rotating earth with 24 time zones we assume 15 degree rotation for every r okay so let's go here and try to do a thought experiments okay so one thought, uh, this is the top view of the same picture here okay so these two so if i were to have a sim, sim, a single ball which was supposed to move in this direction okay right with earth not rotating the ball would keep moving and reach the zero degree target okay right and that is seen in this view as starting from north pole and reaching that zero degree target now imagine the earth is rotating from west to east and the ball actually moves in a straight line right it will keep moving in a straight line but by the time it reaches here in one hour the minus 15 degree point would actually come here so imagine there is an observer at 0 degree watching all this motion who is a part of rotating frame he will not see a straight line motion he will think the ball actually instead of going in his direction is curving the actual motion of the ball is not a curve as seen by this 0 degree observer it seems the body has curved as you can see that and again the same logic use your right hand thumb rule for v relative which is this way and omega which is in the north pole direction you cross product it there is a leftward coriolis force that causes this type of a motion so the same picture the explanation of cyclones and how they move i have put a detailed explanation picture in the description below so please do download it and try to go through it in your leisure okay right so this is illustration number 3 for the illustration number 4 this is slightly tough because i'm going to introduce slowly even the alpha this time okay so right now again lot of things on the board let's go for the right side here concentrate here okay so what we are going to do is very simple again a top view of a turn table where you could see a person is sitting rigidly fixed to this table and he's having um, he's almost at the rim of the table therefore he will have now a translational velocity can you see an r on omega and also his head will rotate like this with the same omega as the table so there will be two effects that will have and let's um, uh, suppose outside the table nicely squatting on the floor at rest is a person called b okay assume this person is called a and this person is called b uh he, the, right now i have taken a convenient case where all the three the center the person who is observing and the body being observed are collinear so this body let's say is at a distance of r2 from the center so if this distance is r1 if this distance is r1 okay and this distance is r2 minus r1 the total distance from the center of this person is r2 simple 
Now, uh, in this picture here on the right side, we will try to see what is the relative velocity calculations. And in this picture here, we'll try to see the relative acceleration. Okay, so now basically from the practical experience, you should be able to visualize that if this person is asked what this person is doing, actually, this person is not moving anywhere. He's at rest. We all know that that's the truth. But this person will complain that by the time I go around and come back here, right, he would see that this person actually goes in reverse and comes back to the same position. So if you ask this person practically what this guy is doing, he would say that B is executing a circular motion of radius R2 going around in reverse direction with the same omega and same alpha. Why same omega and same alpha? Because he should see him again here by the time he comes back. So this is the truth. Our concept that we developed on the first page with all the formulae, all the math should explain the same thing. Then only the concept is right. Okay, right. So I'll try that. Okay. So for, for this fellow to say that this fellow is moving in circular motion, I should find the velocity and acceleration of this guy, which helps him understand that he's in circular motion. Okay, right. So let's do the velocity part. Now, uh, any observer when he's watching, another guy, the relative velocity will have two parts. One is the translational velocity reversed and added. Can you see this R1 omega translational velocity are reversed and add simple, but his rotating head will also put one more component. If the head is rotating this way, he'll put the component in reverse like this. And what's the value of that component? The distance between them multiplied by omega. Therefore, the net effect of B as watched by A would be these two sum. Can you clearly add and say that the velocity of B in rotating frame with respect to A is R2 omega, which is nice, right? So if, if from the center, a distance R2, the velocity is R2 omega. That's the step one for proving that he is in circular motion. Step two is only correct if I can prove that he's having an acceleration which is conducive for non-uniform circular motion. For that, we'll move on to this diagram and this should be more carefully done. Okay, now, a lot of arrows are there. I'll, I'll take you along with me, don't worry. So the, the person who is squatting is here. I've drawn his real accelerations. Remember, if he's moving with a uni, uh, circular motion with alpha, then he would have a centripetal acceleration given by R1 omega square, real acceleration. And there is a tangential acceleration, real one, R1 alpha. Okay, right. Now, when he sits and watches this guy, okay, who is actually at rest, all these arrows are all pseudo things. Really speaking, he never moved anywhere. Okay, right. So let's try to understand what all relative accelerations he will see. Okay, right. That pseudo force components, all these M's are multiplied. Okay. Now, I told you in these kind of situations, four types of pseudo forces would be there. Pseudo force components would be there. First, linear terms. Any accelerations that are there, you should reverse and add. Please don't think this is Euler term. Please don't think this is centrifugal force. These two are simple linear terms that we do in translating frames. The green ones, can you see, I have reversed and added. Now comes the rest of the things, okay? Centrifugal is easier. Always centrifugal term is the distance between the two multiplied by m omega square in the outward direction. So this blue one is the centrifugal component. We are done with linear and centrifugal. Now the two more things are left out, Coriolis and Euler. Euler is easy. Euler is if he's having alpha R alpha this way, right? Whatever alpha that he's having, the distance between the two multiplied by alpha in the reverse direction is the Euler one. So this red colored reverse arrow is the Euler force, which I wrote at the bottom. Okay, Coriolis, I'm leaving it for the end. So can you see that? m into the distance between the two into alpha that alpha cross r term okay so that would be this number okay right the last one is the coriolis okay so the coriolis one is nothing but m a coriolis is equal to 2 m into v b a cross omega remember there was a minus sign and omega cross i took the minus and i wrote and this v b a is remember in a relative frame what was the relative frame velocity that i got i got this number so i just substituted 
What is the omega direction? It is in the anti-clockwise sense, which is outward vector. So I brought these two product out and then I have to take a cross product of a vector, which is in this direction. I've just drawn the symbols for your easy understanding. I have to do an up, uh, a vector this way, cross outward vector. So just try to do a right hand thumb rule for this cross product, you'll get a right word answer. So this white colored thing should go here as the white color 2m r 2 omega square. Now just do this, this and this addition, you'll end up having cancellation of all these three and you'll end up getting only m r 2 omega square, which is a good thing because the B should feel like to this fellow having an r 2 omega square acceleration. So the two cancels off as you can see the green plus blue plus white will give you m r 2 omega square towards the center, which is nice because that will mean that it's moving in circular motion. Not only that, this is m r1 alpha that's not good right you need an r2 alpha that but that yellow the red one that i have also adds to that and r2 minus r1 adds to r1 here r2 minus r1 adds to r1 and some of these two produce an r2 alpha here so uh, this white one this blue one this green one produce an r2 omega square this way this red and this green one will produce an R2 alpha, ensuring this person along with this velocity say that he's in circular motion of radius R2 with an angular velocity omega and an angular acceleration alpha. You might say that I took an easy way out because at this instant, if it is true, doesn't mean throughout the motion it will be. So that I am leaving it to you as homework and a practice and trust me, I've done that and you do end up getting it, but it will be slightly more cumbersome. So uh, what you should be proving is if he has gone to some other position here, okay, right, and the person doesn't move anywhere, then these things won't be collinear. Your R1, R2 and whatever R2 minus R1 in the previous picture were collinear. I took the easy way out. I would urge you if you have, uh, want to test all the formulae that I derived at the start to be correct, try to draw all those vectors using different colors. Take your time, take a big paper and try to draw all those vectors. Trust me, you will end up getting again the same result that this person will think that this fellow is going actually in a circular motion of radius R2 with angular velocity omega and angular acceleration alpha. So that's it. And what I'll try to do is with the next series, of videos, maybe one or two weeks by uh, by the end of this month, I'll try to put up some problems in physics surgery originals on Coriolis force and uh, centrifugal force just at the JE level uh, by giving information just the way the JE advanced exam also did in the past. Okay, right. So as I said, some announcement. Uh, please to uh, try sharing this video and rest of the content with others, you know, in WhatsApp and Telegram groups. Okay, so uh, why I'm requesting this is it's, this is very, very important for uh, my motivation to go forward. As you know, that uh, September first week onwards today, the Supreme Court has ruled or ruled that we can start offline classes and the place where I'm working, I would be actually going for the offline classes. So the amount of time I will have to produce the content would be reduced and going by the last uh, one or two weeks, uh, the videos that I was getting response from uh, the, from the comments, I see the students are praising the content and all that, and I, I'm very happy. But when I uh, request them to share, yes, they, they, some of the people are really sharing, but I don't see that sharing happening uh, at a very good level because I could see the number of views have come down. Uh, maybe I'm overestimating myself, but I genuinely feel the content is unique and would be useful for a lot of students. So, uh, so if you are re really sharing it, then it's fine. Thank you very much. But in case you are not, uh, please do share because the number of views are not reflecting the amount of sharing that you are doing. So when you share, please do kindly request others on my behalf to subscribe. Uh, and, and, and that would extra motivate me to come up with the content. Otherwise, I'll be reviewing the uh, progress of my channel in the next two weeks. And if it is not very, very encouraging, then maybe the frequency of the videos that will be coming out would be reduced. And because I have to now channelize my energy onto the other things if this is not I would love to actually give more time to this but that would really depend upon how the channel is progressing in the next two weeks so that's something that I would be very very forthcoming I'm very frank person that's why I'm coming up with this kind of a request okay so please as I 
keep saying that knowledge is power knowledge shared is power multiplied this is something i told even in the first video i reiterate in the 100th video too okay right so whether i continue uh, the channel or not i think this has been a very good journey for me 100 videos is not a joke in the last two and two and a half months so thanks for everything and hopefully see you in the next video